Hello and welcome to our Firefly Reviews. This week we're discussing the episode Trash. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. And surprisingly, the episode was not its namesake. It absolutely was not. This episode originally aired... Well, it didn't air originally in North America. But we have a UK air date, which is July 21st, 2003. Mm. Yes. Uh, So obviously... So obviously we don't have uh, viewership numbers for this episode because it didn't air in North America and I couldn't find anything for the UK. Mm. But going from the July 21st date, uh, number one song in America. Mm. Now I'm thinking with Eminem he would still be sitting on top or did he get dethroned? Oh no, this is like seven months later, Dave. Oh, closer to that. Mm. Yeah, with that. Yeah, with that. Yeah, I got nothing. It is Crazy in Love by Beyonce featuring Jay-Z. I'm sure I've heard it, but it's just not coming to mind. I don't think I have. And Mm -hmm. uh, number one movie in America this week. Mm. Peak in 2000. 2003. In the summer. Mm. Yeah, I still got nothing. I mean, it's not a great movie. It's Bad Boys 2. On the one hand, I'm not surprised, but yeah, it's just nothing I remember seeing and just meh. I mean, watch the first one. The first one's quite good, but I don't think you need to see the second. Yeah. And I, I still haven't seen the third one, so, you know. Anyway, uh, WWF champion at the time. Mm. Oh, yeah. In the summer of 2003. Uh, it could be just about anyone uh, not too knowledgeable with how it was around that time. Mm. Yeah, no guesses in my mind. Like, Stab in the Dark would be supposedly The Rock, depending on what other stuff was kind of going on, but yeah, I'm not too sure. No, it is uh, uh, it is Brock Lesnar. Uh, back to him again. Yes, they were they were kind of trying to put him over a lot. Mm. Uh, he would lose the title not long after this, though. We will talk about that later. Uh, so this episode opens in a desert where a naked mouse sits on a rock, staring into the distance and saying to himself, "Yeah, that went well." Oh, there you go. The fact that this episode is called Trash and all that particular stuff. It went well. During a cargo transfer 72 hours later, Mal meets, Mal meets up with Monty, a war buddy and fellow brown coat turned smuggler. As Monty's uh, crew unloads cargo, he tells Mal that he's gotten married and introduces his wife, Bridget. Bridget turns out to be Mal's ne- nemesis, Saffron, the, uh, the lady who pretended to be Mal's wife in a previous episode. And a fight breaks out between them. Enraged to learn of Saffron's double dealing, Monty leaves without her, stranding her on the deserted moon where Mal is waiting for a pickup. Mal orders Saffron to walk away and be left behind, but reconsiders when she tempts him with the prospect of a lucrative heist. Later, Serenity arrives to pick up Mal and the unloaded cargo. Uh, later, Mal lets Saffron out of one of the loaded crates into the cargo bay. In the common room, Saffron uh, describes to the crew her plan to steal a priceless antique laser pistol, the Lassiter, from a wealthy collector of Earth That Was artifacts. She claims a detailed knowledge of the security arrangements, but explains that the difficulty lies in getting the weapon out of the estate, something that Serenity's crew could accomplish. The crew is outraged that Mal has brought Saffron on board, but they reluctantly agree with the plan. Which, honestly, they rightfully bloody well should. I agree with Wash. She has tried to kill basically everyone on the ship. Uh. (laughs) Uh, James decide to watch over River and Simon and keep them out of Saffron's sight. River worries about the situation, telling Simon she doesn't trust Saffron, and she knows that Jane had tried to betray the Tams to the Alliance. Meanwhile... Wash and Kaylee instruct Saffron, Mal and Saffron to dump the collectible. Uh, 
The collectible pistol, once they acquire it, into an automated trash disposal unit, which Kaylee can reprogram to have the trash taken to a remote location where they can pick it up. Mal and Saffron enter the estate without difficulty. They find uh, the room that houses the well-protected collectible, but they meet Duron himself. Duron rushes to Saffron and, um, and embraces her, calling her Yolanta, and thanking Mal for bringing back his wife. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Who had apparently disappeared six years ago. Saffron insists that Duron provide some camp compensation for Mal's rescue. Duron steps uh, out to get the reward money for Mal to allow them, uh, and this allows them to finish retrieving the pistol. As Duron re-enters, uh, he attempts to. Uh, oh, where am I? Uh, Saffron knocks him out with a kick and leaves with Mal who has discarded the antique in the trash chute after they escape, after which they escape. Meanwhile, Wash uh, has been hovering, surrounded directly under the trash uh, unit of the estate, while Jane retrieves the control unit and Kaylee reprograms it, clinging to the ship's hull. A delay arises during the windy, during some wind when uh, Jane is incapacitated by an electric shock. But Zoe uh, helps Kaylee replace the control board just in time for an automatic pickup vehicle to collect the trash unit. Jane is dragged back on board by Shepard Book. As Mal and Saffron fly toward the, ra the rendezvous in Isis Canyon, uh, Mal continues to uh, explore his theory that Duran was Saffron's true love and original husband. Saffron uh, seems to become emotional, but when Mal is off guard, she secures his gun and takes him prisoner. Saffron orders Mal to disrobe as revenge for him seeing her naked in the previous in the episode our mrs reynolds and strands him in the desert long before uh before proceeding to drop to the look uh, before proceeding to the drop location as saffron searches through the garbage for the antique laser pistol inara emerges above her to taunt her with the weapon the companion reveals that she'd been part of the plan all along knowing that saffron would get the drop on them somehow and arrange to beat her at her own game of deception uh inara uh, remotely closes the uh, garbage container to, check, to trap Saffron for the authorities to pick up later. On Serenity, the crew discovers that Saffron has again sabotaged their ship, delaying their trip to the rendezvous so that Kaylee can make so that Kaylee can make repairs. Uh, Jane awakens in the infirmary to find out that Simon has medically paralyzed him to help him rest from a spinal injury. Simon reveals his knowledge of Jane's plan to sell out the Tams, but reminds him that the that Serenity's crew are a team, and that as Jane's doctor, he will never harm him. River, however, warns Jane that she can kill him with her brain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once repaired, Serenity makes it to Mal's location. Mal and Anaria, having reached an understanding, trade jokes about the heist. Mal casually boards Serenity in front of his, in front of his crew, still completely naked. Wash and Joey and Zoe are shocked by the captain's brazenness, but uh, Kaylee cheerfully congratulates Mal as the ship lifts off from the desert. So what did you think about this one, Dave? This one turned out pretty good. Just a case of bringing back uh, Sharon, bringing her back and going into that particular story. Just first introduction to this, both of pointing the guns and just... The other guy's standing in the middle is like, I'm guessing I'm missing something. Just starting a whole big fight. It's like, oh, this move, this, the episode title definitely is not going to be the case because it's just marvelous with how everything turned out with it. But thankfully now she did end up in the trash in the end. So very apt for its titling. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's a fun episode. But I think even more so... Just with her discussion with Mel at the beginning, with her getting dropped off, and it's like, haha, you got your comeuppance. And her snaking her way back into things, and it's like, please don't fall for this again. Please don't fall for this again. And then bringing her up onto the ship, and I can't remember the line exactly, but she asks for any particular questions. It's like, Wash is like, yeah, I have a question. Um, why is it that she's here? Why is she back on the ship? Which is a completely legitimate question. So very much. It's just like, take her and boot her off the ship and let's go. <laughs> but still, just 
hanging on to things and the fact... Again, I had my inklings with Anara coming in and sort of speaking a little bit. It's like, oh, please, please have something together so that if something goes wrong, you could at least save the day like last time. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a fun episode. It's maybe not the most important to kind of like the overall narrative, but it's still a good time. Ah, uh, just so much fun. But I think aside from that, just the case of Simon understanding what... Uh, John did with his betrayal in the previous episode and sort of telling him, hey, as my doctor, and if you're in need healing, I'll take care of you, but don't do anything like trying to send us off again because in that sort of circumstance, there's no saving you. And then just uh, River coming in and be like, also, I could kill you with that braid. <laughs> Die. That's just good. like, uh, so good. It's a good time. All right, so if there's nothing else about this episode, next week we'll be discussing the episode The Message. Mal and Zoe are going to receive uh, in the mail the body of Tracy, a comrade in arms who fought with them at the Battle of Duke Kang, and they attempt to honor his recorded wish to be returned home. Hmm. Yes. Uh, however, they're going to deal with uh, some corrupt alliance officer uh and stuff's gonna happen i don't really want to uh, do anyway more than that uh, isn't that always the case you try to do a thing and then everything in their grandma decides to come in to try and stop you but we are getting to the last couple episodes now so mm -hmm. well we'll have to see what happens next so until next time yes. i'm paul and i'm dave <laughs>